Do you ever wake up like a zombie? It's the worst, and in my experience, those mornings are much more frequent in the winter when it's extra dark. So what if I can make a device that makes my bedroom brighter before my alarm rings to, to prepare my body for waking up? Let's call it something like Zombie Gone. It's a lamp. I'm making a lamp. Self-dimming lamp, though. This lamp needs to be able to evenly distribute light across my entire bedroom, though, and I have an idea on how we can make this interesting. If you've ever watched the DIY Perks video, you probably have a fair grasp of the internal components of an LCD screen by now. I think we can reuse some of those internals from a broken screen to get this light diffusion that I'm after. Okay, I kind of know because DIY Perks already done it and he's made a tutorial and it's up there. But we're gonna do it anyway because this is different, right? The reason why broken LCD displays are so great at being repurposed for light diffusion is that, well, apart from driving the LCD screen itself, its sole purpose is to create a nice and uniform backlight using something like this. It's literally designed for our use case. The backlighting section has a nice and sturdy metal frame that we can easily fit some LED strips into. It's got this chunky piece of plastic with some engravings that will spread the light across the whole surface here. It's got some of these diffusion layers. And also a few layers of some really cool optics that gives the illusion of depth in the light. So this is really quite simple. One, design a PCB that can dim some LEDs using pulse width modulation, which sounds an awful lot like another PCB I recently made for another project on this channel called Fetch, the world's largest Fairfleet display. Check it out if you haven't. Two, get these PCBs manufactured and assembled by today's sponsor, PCBWay. All the hard parts are taken care of. All I need to do is to 3D print some parts, assemble them, bada bing, bada boom, it's all done. Easy, right? Wrong. Okay, 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 okay. Let's not get ahead of ourselves because, as usual, I managed to screw up the PCB design slightly. I told PCBWay to mount this component on this pad. They responded, hey, this is not gonna work. And I said to them, oh really? Your machines can't do this? <laughs> okay. No disrespect to PCBWA, they did a great job. The shit you see right there is just me being way too cheap to buy a new appropriately sized component when I have a perfectly functioning one right here. I also managed to screw up the power delivery circuitry on this board as well. In this case, it means that the Arduino Nano that I've sprinkled across this board can't be powered up using USB. All right, let's plug it into the 24 volt power supply that's supposed to power the thing when it's not connected to a computer and then flash it with bootloaders and firmware and all that stuff. And now all the hard stuff is done, right? Wrong. You know what? This is actually where the hard stuff begins because I wanted this thing to look kind of nice. I'm planning to use it. I'm not just gonna show it off on YouTube and throw it in the trash. So I had to sand and prime and sand and prime and sand and prime the 3D printed parts. It takes forever. It's super boring. So I'm not gonna show you any of that footage. Instead, let's have a look at me pretending to sand, singing a song that I kept repeating in my head for the 20 hours that I used finishing this part. I'm still sanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. But now all the hard stuff is done. Right? Wrong, Simon, from two seconds ago. You made a stupid decision when designing these parts, which basically makes it impossible to assemble one of the biggest pieces. In addition to that, you tilted the screen 10 degrees without putting anything behind to support it. Okay, let's just ignore that last part about the tilt and instead watch some footage of me attempting to assemble this thing for 30 minutes straight. I continued trying to assemble this thing for several hours after that, but the camera ran out of memory. I considered redesigning the parts and printing out new ones, but when I remembered how much time I'd spent sanding and painting these, I puked and took out the file, filed it down and forced it in place with a hammer instead. After all that, I sealed it off with hot glue so it can never be removed again, and this decision has yet to come bite me in the ass. All right. The rest of the design was a lot easier to assemble and I honestly think the whole thing came out quite nice, but does it work? No! Well, actually yes, it does work, but I just thought more problems would fit the narrative of this story better, you know? Anyway, it'll dim the light up over a set period of time to wake you up and you can press the override button to make it a normal reading lamp that can be dimmed with this rotary encoder. To design the PCB, I used the open source designs of the Arduino Nano and an Adafruit real-time clock module that can keep track of time when it's unplugged from mains. I also threw in one of the ULN2803 transistor arrays that we're using in Fetch, which can provide enough current for all of these LEDs, as well as some protection circuitry, and that's basically it. It would be very easy to make this design on a protoboard, or at least a much less complicated PCB 
PCB, but since I had the opportunity, I wanted to test the PCB assembly capabilities of PCBWay, who kindly sponsored this video. And I must say, I'm very satisfied. Their customer support was very helpful, and it was easy to upload the files and place the order, even for someone who's never done PCBA before, like me. The CAD encode for this project is uploaded to our GitHub, so you can check that out if you want to be as miserable as me attempting to assemble this thing. There is uh, no way to change the alarm settings apart from flashing new firmware to the microcontroller unless you adapt the design with a new display of some sort. Now, where do I plug in this HDMI? Okay, that's a joke. I'm not gonna connect our Fairflow clock to this thing. I was thinking something more like this, but I live a routine life and this was really a requirement for me, so screw that. Who doesn't want to wake up at 6 a.m. every day anyway? Besides, this is just a supplement to an alarm that will prepare your body for the alarm by slowly waking you up, so... It basically won't wake you up by itself and then I figured less complexity is a fair trade-off. But how well does this thing actually work? I'd say it works great, but I'm a bit biased and my girlfriend's not totally convinced, so I can't give you a definitive answer. Her opinion could be influenced by the fact that she thinks this thing looks kinda ugly. Um, but she could also just not feel the effect. I'm not sure, it could, it could be placebo on my end, um, but as long as I feel less like a zombie in the morning, I'd, I, I call it a win. All right, everyone, that's it for this time. Once again, huge thanks to PCBWay, who sponsored this project. Check them out at pcbway.com if you need to make a PCB or have other prototyping needs. They can probably help you out. And thanks to you for watching. If you enjoyed what we did, then you know there are several things down below that you can use to show your appreciation. You know how that works. And you can share this video with your friends. Until next time, happy procrastinating.